Hello and welcome to Comic Store and Weekly, the weekly show that we talk about comic books that came out this week. Nice. It is Andy and myself. Andy, how are you doing today? I'm fantastic, Dan. Thanks for asking. All right, let's go ahead and jump on in with the first comic of the week. Batman vs. Ra's al Ghul, number six. I believe this is one that you've been reading. I have not been reading this. So Batman vs. Ra's al Ghul, number six, <laughs> came out this week. I didn't even read it from the beginning. I... Then he bought it. I, I was going to say, so, I assumed you had bought it. And I was like, I don't remember Dan saying he's been reading this, but all right. I saw it bought I'm like, huh. Well, it's sort of like the Catwoman. I was like, I don't remember Dan saying he's been reading yeah. Catwoman, but he bought it. So I assume. Then he reads them. So it's out. Uh, all right. So on to the next one, which I did read. Uh, Batman Fortnite, zero point number one. Just so you know, before I go into this, I'm going to let you know one of the cool things that... Uh, this and Fortnite are doing where each issue that you buy physical copy only you get a code that gets you an in-game item and oh, if okay. you get all six you get like a new batman skin oh that's cool which right. is a fantastic way to yeah, get yeah, Fortnite yeah. players into the comic books how much is the issue um, i i'm gonna so assume normal price so like 3.99 4.99 yeah probably it's around actually there. not bad um but luckily comiXology did finally add into the title no Fortnite code because <laughs> they anyway. probably they probably sold a lot and people oh, were yeah. complaining most oh likely. definitely yeah, yeah. um all right so uh honestly it was a pretty solid comic. So it starts off where just a rift appears in Gotham. Mm -hmm. Batman goes to try and figure it out. He gets too close and gets sucked inside. Right. Into and the uh, he ends up in the Fortnite world where he cannot talk. Mm -hmm. And he has knowledge. He kind of has knowledge of who he is, but he doesn't at the same time. Right. And in the Fortnite world, your memory gets reset every 22 minutes. Um Honestly, it was a lot better than I was expecting. Fair I was enough. expecting something that was going to be a little too goofy, mm. uh, but it it truly is like a Batman style comic where if you removed or were not aware of what Fortnite really was, right. you probably wouldn't entirely notice until they start going in the other characters and you're mm. like, why is there a Borderlands psycho in this comic? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but it was actually pretty good. If you like Fortnite, if you like Batman, you're going to enjoy this. Um yeah, there's not there's not too much else to say, but it did truly feel like an actual story. Okay. It did not feel just like a cash grab, hey, right, right, buy right. it for the Fortnite skin. So if you're interested, Batman Fortnite, zero point number one. Next up on our list today, uh, Catwoman number 30 came out. Ba <laughs> ben bought that one and has been reading it, so I figured I'd let you guys know. Um, the Flash 769 came out this week. Uh, this nice. one is continuing Sorry. the Gold Beetle with uh, Wally West, who is in the body of Impulse, mm -hmm. which is actually great because Wally eventually becomes, I guess, like the leader of the time masters or whatever they're called they don't actually say it in here okay. so gold beetle's like oh my gosh it's wally west and he's like well, this is my last thing and she's like oh, please you've got at least six more crises to go through <laughs> before this um but it was i actually really enjoyed this one because they gave gold beetle such a good personality that felt like booster gold with a little bit of blue beetle in there okay. but it de it had a lot of good humor with it yeah yeah um gold beetle is the daughter right from the far 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 yeah future. something like that yeah the great 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 yeah yes um and uh so this is continuing that as well as flat uh barry and mr terrific are trying to communicate with him and they're learning that basically Wally's getting transported to different periods of time where mm -hmm. the speed force is going out of whack and mm -hmm. he has to fix it. Mm -hmm. And I guess each time that he fixes it, like Barry gets some of his speed force back. So it's an interesting concept. Okay. Um, it's one that I personally haven't really read before. So it's interesting in that manner. Um, yeah, if you've been reading it, you're going to want to keep reading it. It's actually pretty good. Uh, if you have not been reading it, yeah, you might be able to jump on on the previous one because you don't need to know anything prior because it just jumps right in after Infinite Frontier. Mm -hmm. um, and it's been a fun book. It's It's got a lot more humor than 
normal and that's entirely thanks to gold beetle sure yeah, so yeah. i hope that she continues to be in this comic so uh on to our next comic one that i really enjoyed justice league number 60 oh that's a good issue i'll let you talk about this one a little uh, bit so this so they're obviously adding black adam into the justice league so this issue was uh black adam had showed up to he was showing up to like a power surge that involved Naomi. Who did she actually have a superhero name, or did they just call uh, her Naomi? No, it's just Naomi. Okay, as um, far as I'm aware. Yeah, I was gonna say because they kept calling her that in the thing, and I was, but she has like a full costume now, so I was like, does she have yeah. a code name? But uh, uh, okay, so then Superman shows up and you know tries to pull away Black Adam, and it's the whole thing of Naomi's home world, and they're now the super powered beings was trying to come away. It's the whole thing. Mm-hmm. The best interactions though were over Black Adam. Oh, because yes. the whole Justice League has to decide whether they should trust Black Adam and let him join the team, and Superman's all for it. And it possibly some of the funniest dialogue oh, yeah. between the Justice League I think I've read in a little oh, bit. Oh, definitely. When like they're uh they're like, Well, whenever you argue against Superman, you always sound kind of evil. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he like wins the argument <laughs> through, through compliments. compliments. <laughs> um yeah, honestly, really good issue. Mm-hmm. Uh, I actually really enjoy Naomi as a character. Yeah, Naomi I is pretty good. Find her better when Bendis isn't right in there. <laughs> this is Bendis. This is Bendis. Mm-hmm. Oh, then that's I would, the reason I why honestly, Naomi's in this. I thought it's this one was somebody made. else because I didn't pay attention to who was writing it, yeah. and I honestly thought it was somebody else because I'm not a huge Bendis guy. Yeah, this honestly, but I actually enjoyed this issue. Yeah. So, all right, well, that's. That's funny. You're earning my respect back then. Yeah, I'll I'll give him that because I honestly thought it was somebody else. I tend to not like his dialogue Yeah, is the thing. Um, I thought it was a fantastic issue. I I really actually like the idea of Naomi on the the Justice League. Black Adam, I think, is going to be a fun addition. I like like that they're trying to – now that The Rock is playing him, I like that they're trying to play him up as an anti-hero again. Where for the longest time, he was just a villain. Oh, yeah. Um, But, yeah, really good issue. Uh, I think this is the is this the second issue on Bendis's run? Uh, I believe so. Okay, yeah. So it, you probably get the previous issue if you're just jumping on. Um, but overall, I thought it was a fantastic issue. The art's mm-hmm. really good too. Oh know. yeah, the art's fantastic. Yeah. Like you said, this is this is redeeming Bendis in my eyes from his Superman because I was not. I was not fan. a fan of his Superman. That's what I'm um, saying. That's why I honestly didn't think it was Bendis, and I didn't pay attention to who was writing it. Right. But it did me. It didn't seem like Bendis. So, yeah. but uh, definitely worth picking up. Honestly, this yeah, this might issue. be my favorite Justice League in a while. Yeah, it, I enjoyed the Snyder run at first, mm-hmm. and then it kind of lost me. And I'm a big Snyder fan. I enjoyed it at first until it became too Scott much Snyder, of Zach. a. Uh, this is the big event, so I have to wrap that all yeah, in here. Yeah, I feel like that's when it kind of it kind of blew me. up too much. Exactly. Yeah, so um, I'm glad they're keeping it in this comic, yeah, yeah. and that's just where it's gonna stay. So, uh, next up, we've got the next Batman, Second Son, number eight. We finally find out what actually happened. What uh, Tim did, it, Jace uh, mm-hmm. did that forced him to have to leave Gotham and all of that stuff. I mean, it was okay. Like I, I said, I'm still, I'm just, I'm getting care. bored with the yeah. the Fox family drama. I feel like this could have happened in issue three. Yeah. Yeah. Like you, you didn't need to take this long to get to, Hey, this is what he did. Okay, cool. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Uh, it's but, okay. Yeah. I'm, it was all right. I mean, it's a buck. So if you've been yeah. enjoying it, you might as well keep going. Well, they really need to get to the, the Batman part. In yes. The next I want to know why he's Batman. So, all right, next up, a fantastic comic that came out this week, Nightwing 79. With uh, where uh, canon, John Tan- <laughs> there is a Bat Family group text. Oh, hilarious. Did you uh, get your wallet stolen? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then his phone's. Z- 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 yeah, yeah. Uh, it's, it's like, oh, you got to be careful. Uh, Harper loves her emojis yeah, 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 or yeah. something like that. I think it was Stephanie. Or Stephanie. Stephanie yeah. yeah, she's like, Stephanie loves her emojis. Uh, fantastic issue. Mm-hmm. Tom Taylor's fantastic, as always. The art's I, the art is great. Um, I'm liking the direction of Nightwing now as a rich man, mm-hmm. and is I like when they go out for pizza. And he's like two slices of pizza. She's like, "You're a billionaire." He's like, 
right oh. four <laughs> slices of pizza. <laughs> like, because it's still Dick Grayson. Yeah. And that's his thing. And uh, I really like, I like the setup they're doing, mm -hmm. bringing in like uh, Tony Zuko's daughter and things like that and her taking over Bloodhaven. I think, honestly, I think this is a great comic. I'm yeah. glad we got back to Nightwing. Yes. For the, for being so long of Rick Grayson and all that stuff, this feels like an actual Nightwing book again. Mm -hmm. So And the the small peak you get at the new villain was yes. enough to make you go, wait, what's going on? Yeah, yeah. But also like not enough that it really leaves mystery and allows this to be focused on Nightwing and what he's doing in Bloodhaven right. right now. Yeah. Um fantastic. I would highly recommend picking this yeah. up. Uh Tom Taylor. The guy is a probably one of my favorite comic to, writers right yes, now. Yes, he is. He is uh, top two with Kelly Thompson. Mm, Those two yeah. are my favorites when it comes to writers and comic books. Uh, but yes, definitely pick it up. Nightwing uh, seventy nine, I believe. Is if you're a, if you're a Nightwing fan and have been avoiding it, like the Rick Grayson thing, like me, uh, you can go back to reading Nightwing now. Yeah. Uh, so that is the end. Of our DC portion. It's like no DC book. <laughs> yeah. Like four DC books. has been very, very, very light. light. Like the last like and month honestly, or two. Honestly, I love it. Yeah, it does make it easier. Because it makes it, one, easier for us because we do have to read so many. But yeah. also because it makes me go, okay, if I was on a budget, I could buy right, everything. Yeah, yeah. Like I wouldn't have to pick and choose which ones I wanted to buy this week. So I do like that. Uh, moving into our Marvel portion, we've got Amazing Spider-Man number 64. Um, so this one's actually been pretty fun. We are still kind of got multiple plots going mm -hmm. on. We've got the uh, Fisk with Kindred trying to break him and figure out kind of what's going on mm -hmm. with this character. We, But the main part of the story is we've got uh, Robertson, Robbie Robertson from the Bugle. Mm -hmm. and we've got tombstone and their kids are dating each other oh, those right. yeah, two yeah. have a like a beef with each other and it's fun watching them have to work together of truly the good cop bad cop yeah, kind of yeah, thing yeah, yeah. and um honestly it's a lot more fun than i was expecting Fair I, I was I know kind of at one point you were kind of like eh, i'm not really sure yeah, they and they this actually yeah. make it make sense why these random villains show why Madame Mask and Crime Master are working together, mm. and it's basically around the idea that with Fisk being leader, if they were to take out one of the crime bosses, well, obviously someone would have to take over it's the true. turf, and so it's it's starting to go a little bit more into how other villains are mm. reacting to New York with Fisk being the mayor. I see. I got you. Okay. And I'm, I'm enjoying it. I yeah. think it's good. Uh, we didn't see much of Boomerang in this one. I, I still love the character. They, mm. They've made me enjoy Boomerang, which I was never expecting to enjoy that character. Uh, if you have been reading it, keep going. If you have not been reading it, I would not start with this arc. I would start, uh, I want to say one or two arcs ago, because this one does involve a lot from the previous right, ones. Right, it kind of builds on. That yeah, yeah. so much goes on that you will be very confused. Fair enough. Next up, we've got Avengers number 45. Did you read this one? I did. This So uh, we're past the Phoenix tournament thing. Thank goodness. And Thank King in Black. And King in Black. Which begs the question: When did the Phoenix tournament take place? We're not gonna, we're not gonna even. Because they act like the King of Black thing just ended. Yeah. Anyway, but so did the Phoenix tournament. We'll we'll, we'll skip over that. That no, doesn't matter. Uh, no, no, I'm just <laughs> saying timeline wise, it doesn't make sense. No, it does not. It does not make <laughs> um, sense at all. So this one has to do with the rise of the Vampire Nation in uh, Chernobyl, and they're a little irritated because at the end of King of Black, Blade was like. I'm going to slaughter I'm you. All right. Well, there's no more symbionts. Got all these free vampires lying around. Um, and how uh, Dracula wants the vampire nation to be like actually uh, a nation, a nation. He wants to, to be uh, recognized by like the UN and things like that. Uh, and so then it kind of just turns into kind of that and how Blade obviously doesn't agree with it because they're vampires. Mm -hmm. But then in a shocking turn of events, which actually seems like a cool setup for a story. I like the way they do it. Blade becomes the UN like, sheriff, like the representative yes. of law within the vampire nation, which as you can assume 
is going to have a lot of hijinks. It's, it's going to be great. <laughs> it's going to be pretty uh, funny. I think it's actually a pretty good setup for the yeah. story. The issue itself is 100% set setup. It's not mm-hmm. bad. Um, and it's a very interesting idea. Yeah. And I also like the fact that like Dracula is like, we want to be recognized by the UN as a legitimate nation. And then it cuts to like Dracula in his throne room and he's got like people hanging from hooks. And yeah. he's like, this is great. <laughs> like, um, <laughs> so what, what are you doing there? <laughs> They're doing their Dracky. Uh, um, overall, I thought it was good set up to the to yeah. the next arc. Uh, and yeah, great jump on part. Yeah, point because they kind of explain everything. The issue sets up with all of the Avengers that are currently on the Avengers mm-hmm. as of right now, um, and c- kind of gives you the the rundown of where they're currently at right. after the tournament and the and they have a the thingy and the blah 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 mini explanation of who the new Phoenix is right. Which you don't need to read the tournament because that just didn't matter. matter. Trust me, because <laughs> the random to. new person for the Phoenix just showed up at the end. Um, so yeah, I mean it was a good. It's a good jumping on point. It's yeah. a very good setup issue, I think. And a, I mean, it, it's called the King in Blood is the name of the arc. Yes, which yeah. I I'm really excited to see where this goes. Yeah, this comic has gotten me much more interested in Blade than I was expecting to. Sure, yeah. Because at first I was like, "Why are we putting Blade on the Avengers?" Like, there's a new movie coming out. Exactly, which <laughs> got delayed. No, um, well, everything did. So did Black Widow for like 80 years. Yeah, Black Widow was originally announced just after the first Avengers. Black, <laughs> Black Widow got delayed so many times that they had to do three separate stories for it. <laughs> <laughs> they keep putting out comics, dude. Exactly. We gotta keep like, people remember, alive. remember Black Widow. <laughs> anyway, uh, Avengers forty five. Mm. I would say worth picking. Yeah, up. I definitely think so. Uh, next up, one I was not expecting to enjoy as much as I am. Black Knight: Curse of the Ebony Blade. Number oh yeah, two. it was a good issue. So last yeah. time he got his head cut off and he came back to life, nope. and in this one, it's kind of a. He's in like that disbelief of, oh, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine. No, I'm not. I just died. Am I a zombie? <laughs> yeah. And I'm actually enjoying this Black Knight. Yeah. Book. I, I think it's fun. They it's explain where the weapon came from, the things around it, yeah, how yeah. Merlin's involved, and I don't like want to say too much, but medieval justice or Justice League Avengers is kind of what it sounded like. Mm-hmm. I I would say pick it up. Uh, yeah. Elsa, Bloodstone. Elsa Bloodstone shows up. It's a good issue. It's a lot of fun. It's a it's a it's a nice turn sort of like Excalibur did where they get kind of that mystical part of the Marvel universe. Yes. Mixed with the normal superheroic stuff. And I, I yeah. enjoyed it. I thought it was really good. I would suggest very much picking this up. Uh, you don't need to know anything about black Knight. Yeah. They explain really all you need to know in the previous one. And honestly, it's just so much better than I was expecting. I, I, Cause I've read some <laughs> black Knight stuff in the past and sometimes it's okay. Right. But I'm really enjoying these. The first two issues have been really good. I think it's a mini series, though, right? I don't think it's. Uh, I do believe ongoing. so. Um, it actually does not say. Okay, maybe it's an ongoing. Maybe if it does, well, it'll be an ongoing. Yeah, that's so, my expectation. Yeah. Uh, I'm enjoying it. I, I thought would it say was we're really good. Up. Yeah, hundred percent. So, uh, moving on to our next one, we've got Captain Marvel number twenty-eight. So this is a great example of how Kelly Thompson is getting me to enjoy a character I was not previously enjoying. Right. So this one. First off, Carol gets a new outfit. Um, so, and I say that because... Is that the name of the issue? <laughs> well, so this Carol is, gets a new outfit. Wait, 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 wait. Okay. I'm, I'm going to show you the cover. The cover says, oh no, this is not one of the variant ones. Oh, okay. There's a variant one where it goes, new outfit, great jumping on point. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's Spider-Woman. Oh, is that... It says it on Spider-Woman. That's Spider-Woman, Spider-Woman. Yeah, that's it says right. It Spider-Woman. Anyway, yeah, yeah. Uh, so she gets a new outfit. Oh, oh no, you, no, no. Wrong no, direction, there. wrong direction. There you go. That's actually kind of cool looking. Because uh, in this one, she's learning... Oh, you, I'll explain it in okay. a second. So she is trying to figure out what to do with of... I think that's the way you pronounce the guy's name. I should tweet at Kelly Thompson and see if she can tell me. It's O-V-E. It's the uh, son of Namor and Enchantress from the future. Oh, that's right. Yeah, That okay. learned to time travel. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. she's kind of in a boat of... She's kind having of these nightmares yeah. and uh, visions of all the Avengers dying because of mm. this character. And she's learning that she kind of needs to learn magic to fight against it. Okay. So she goes to... Uh, Strange. Doctor Strange. And the first thing that he says was actually one that I really liked where he was saying, 
Uh, he was like, if you're trying to learn this because magic is your weakness, mm. I cannot teach you magic because someone as powerful as you needs a weakness. And I was like, that is a great thing for the Good Sorcerer point. Supreme to yeah, say. Yeah, yeah. Um, but she, <laughs> he takes her to the bar with no name. Uh, not the bar with no name, the bar with no doors. Something, or something. like that, yeah, yeah. And he's like, well, you can't wear that outfit. Uh, you're going to need, otherwise you're going to stick out like a sore thumb. So that's her. why she gets the new one. Okay. And he's like, so what's with the hood? And she's like, okay, magicians and wizards love their hoods. And he's like, all right, you're right there. Okay, let's keep it. Remember, but, a sorcerer is a wizard without a hat. Exactly. Um, I love the outfit. I hope she keeps this. It's it's probably my favorite outfit she has ever It is pretty good, had. actually. It's a pretty good outfit. Like, it's pretty good design. Right? It's yeah, a great yeah. design, yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, it's pretty fun. It's If you did not read the previous arc or if you did not enjoy the previous mm-hmm. arc, you're not going to keep enjoying this. Like, Fair enough. Because it is a direct lead up. Mm. And... Um, yeah, she's just trying to figure out whether or not she can learn magic or right. if anyone will teach her magic. Um, I, I personally, I am really starting. I'm really enjoying this. Kelly Thompson is doing a great job of making me interested in a character I was not previously interested right. in. And I like that. It's not super tied into other comics or right, other things yeah. like that. It's worth picking up. So next up, we've got carnage black white and blood number two me did you read this one yeah it's okay i thought this one was better than the last one because it felt like it actually had a story yeah like it felt like we were actually potentially going somewhere especially at the beginning because it actually like roped carnage back into what happened after exactly like we even reference that he's aware that the hive mind has now passed to venom Venom. or eddie and venom yeah yeah it's all right if you like the violence and like just kind of that anthology, different writers writing yeah. their own stories. You'll really enjoy this. If you're looking for one that has more of a a complete story to itself, that it's right. one yeah, complete thing, you're not going to enjoy yeah. this. Yeah, I mean, if you like Carnage and you want some basically short comics about Carnage, yeah, this is the comic for you. So um, that is Carnage, Black, White, and Blood number two. Next up, we've got Champions... Number six. Um, what a weird <laughs> emphasis. Champions. I was number waiting six. for the thing to go down so I could see the <laughs> issue number. Um, so this is continuing after everything that happened with Cradle. Mm-hmm. Uh, Cradle, the Cradle law or Kamala's law has not been fully abol- like uh, abolished. Mm-hmm. So they're kind of learning like, should we be doing things? Right, like it yeah, starts yeah. off with them stopping a bank robbery, which was not actually a bank robbery. It was uh, testing of the bank's security system. Well, but I mean, because... suppose it looks like a bank robbery. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. And they're like, they start commenting on because they're not a legitimate superhero group. They're not going to be told of these things. True. Yeah. And we have a lot of the fallout of, Ironheart and reacting to the group of the fact that everyone blamed her, that she was the one mm-hmm. that was leaking their information and they were so against it. But then Viv does it and they're like, oh, well, you're fine. We'll forgive you. And she's like, guys, what the hell? Like That would be kind of crappy. Um, so, I mean, Viv's a robot. Right. She doesn't know any better. Uh, Synthesoid? Whatever. That's a fancy name um, for a robot. Yeah, it's true. Um, but, I mean, it's all right. Um I believe this is a new writer, so I'm interested in the direction of where this is going. But uh, the plot line of what's happening is Roxon, who essentially made the law happen, Mm -hmm. is trying to repair their public image. So they have created a new social media app, Roxon. No, Lord. Yeah. And it's kind of the classic... Adult, like, is the how are you doing, fellow kids? Yeah, kind yeah, of yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. It's got that vibe. Um, it'll be interesting to see where it goes. It did not really grab me, right? Um, so kind of take that with a grain of salt. Uh, if you enjoy the champions, I would say keep going, right? Um, right. it's worth it if you do enjoy them. If you don't, I wouldn't say this is going to make you go, ah, now I do. Oh, now so. I enjoy the champions. Uh, They're not a bunch of irritating teenagers. 
Now they're a bunch of mildly irritating, <laughs> slightly less irritating teenagers. Um, but yep, that's Champions number six. Next up, we've got Eternals number four. Have you been reading? Eternals? I have been reading Eternals. All right, let's hear. Uh, I enjoyed your take Eternals. On this one. So, uh, I've been enjoying Eternals. It's uh, it's basically cosmic mythology. Is what mm-hmm. is or what they always were. It's Jack Kirby's Fourth World. Yep. No, Fourth World's DC Comics. It's Jack Kirby's Eternal, which is like cosmic mythology. It's very much in. It's the, kind of like the New Gods. It's kind of, well. It's they were both Jack Kirby. That makes sense. Yeah, and what happened was <laughs> Marvel was he made Eternals over at Marvel, or I could be getting this backwards. Uh, I believe he made Eternals over at Marvel, and then they were kind of like, Neh. Mm-hmm. so DC was like, hey, come over here and do it with us. Yeah, and he went over and basically made the New Gods, which was just another version of it. Yeah. And then went back and did Eternals again. It was a whole thing. Um, overall, I'm enjoying it. It is very much, like I said, like this cosmic mythology, kind of like North Norse or, or Greek gods, but with these, you know, ancient beings that were created by the Kree and yada, yada, yada. Mm-hmm. Uh, the actual issue itself, if you have not been following it, this is not the issue to jump on. No, and if you don't, four. And if you don't have some sort of knowledge of the Eternals, which I do, and even I was reading this very confused. <laughs> um, I felt like as someone that knows nothing about yeah, the Eternals, yeah. I kind of liked it because they give you enough to have an idea of who right. they are, but they also keep it hidden enough that some of the turns you're like, I was not expecting that. Sure, I kind yeah. of thought it might happen, but I was not expecting it because I do not know these characters. Right. And then the, the whole setup is just, it's very much like mythology. Yes. But with comic books and stuff like that. And I, I've been enjoying it. I also really like Isad Ribic's art. Um, mm-hmm. I always think, he, although he does always, his some of the faces are yeah, a little that's, weird. Yeah, that's his big thing because he always has those weird faces where they're like... Yeah, with Sprite yeah, is definitely yeah, yeah, noticeable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it, and he always does that in all of his comics, but like the rest of it looks really great. And right. then some about his faces is always just a little off. Um, but yeah, overall, I'm enjoying it. I think it's a fun series. Uh, and I think it, it definitely leans into sort of like Jason Aaron's uh, God Butcher run. It has that same yeah. sort of a cosmic mythology feel to it that I like. I did like how they uh, they reference like humans like Tony Stark, and they're like, "Well, I should go talk to him." Yeah. They love Those it humans when you love pretend that stuff. Have a problem. Yeah. <laughs> Which, I mean, if you think it really about it, strokes their ego. If you're a super being that has been around since the creation of the earth, of course you're going to have like that mindset. Like, yeah. oh yeah, let me go, let me go pander to like the mightiest heroes of the planet, you know, uh, which I, I, yeah, I enjoyed that. Yeah. yeah. I would say if you're interested in kind of the slow burn mythology, yes, it's worth picking up. If you want action, no. Don't pick it up. No, no. I mean, there's some fighting in it, but that's that's it's not some, the point it's of it. It's not the focus. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Although, I mean, because they got the movie coming up too. So if you're intrigued by the movie, this would be a good. Yeah. Even though I believe that uh, one of the characters is gender bent in the movie. I believe so. But, but I mean, knows? overall, that's we'll not find a huge out. deal. Yeah. Um, all right. So moving on, we have a comic I freaking loved. I'm sure you did too. The Mighty Valkyries number oh, one. Oh, it's a good issue. It was so good. You get a, it's kind of got two stories. You yep. got one of Jane Foster. Right. But then you've got one of the mysterious Valkyrie that does not know who she is that showed right. up in the King and Black tie ins for the Valkyries. Oh my gosh. I have never been more interested in a new yeah. character than from this. It's like, really good. It was a good first issue. You should buy this. Yeah. If you're, like, if you've enjoyed, <laughs> like simply it. if you enjoyed Jason Aaron's Thor run, if you enjoyed his, his Jane Foster Thor run, if you enjoyed when she became a Valkyrie, like you just keep Jason going. Aaron. If you enjoy, enjoy, yeah. Just keep going. It's good. Like, I don't know. I don't know There's how else to say There's not too much it. else to say. Cause yeah, it is just a setup. It is issue. a setup issue. Yeah. But it's a really good setup issue. Now, that being said, if you didn't enjoy any of those things we just listed, this won't change your mind because it is because well, it's I mean, just no, a continuation yeah. of all no, of those like all of Jason Aaron's Thor slash Valkyrie slash not so much his Avengers anymore but like it all just kept building on each other so it like, really if did you, if you weren't into all of those other books you're not gonna like this however one this one all of those did feel overall connecting yeah towards his War of the Realms which mm-hmm. is where yep. all of them eventually went to yeah it's true this one definitely felt almost like the start of a new thing that's going to go to mm. its own war of the Realms. i could see that yeah i liked so um all right so moving on we have sword number five this Didn't is one it. of the x-men comics going on right now 
Um, so there was something pretty, there were some funny things in this, but we're also learning of kind of a pseudo loophole in the whole law of can't kill humans of didn't say anything about maiming. Actually, no, it's going into, does that imply to sentient beings from different planets? Okay. Because they go around and they assassinate some of these uh, people that are, they're the lizard people that are going to start the snark war. Okay. Um, I'm not sure if that's been around before, but essentially it's a big violent thing that they don't want to lose separate planets. Okay. And Abigail Brand, apparently her dad's home planet got destroyed in the last Snark War. So uh-huh. this was essentially her going around and making who she wanted to win, win. But it was funny because uh, Fabian... Cortez or something. I honestly don't even know who the guy is. He's just completely naked in front of the council, like explaining why he needs to do this. They're all just humoring him and stuff. And then eventually Abigail shows up with this new character from Araco, which I loved the character design. I'm going to try and find it to show you um, so that they can see your reaction to go, oh my God, I want to see that. <laughs> um, Tell me that character does not look awesome. That is pretty badass, yeah. Okay, I'm going to show you that. That is pretty well. badass. It's, yeah. it's really cool. You can't really see it that well in the comics, so you'll have to buy it. That's a really it cool character it design, actually. Yeah. And I really like it because he sh- <laughs> After they all humor him, they just show up and they're like, by the way, that person's replacing you. And he's like, wait, what? Because <laughs> he's so full of himself yeah, yeah, yeah. that I, I really enjoyed it. The character looks awesome. I'm... I'm really liking the fact that we are getting some of Araco being like having yeah. true meaning. Yeah, uh, yeah. This is, so I'll tell you their name. Uh, it In case it's a spoiler, I'm going to say this slowly that I'm going to say their name. Uh, <laughs> it's Korra of the Burning Heart. I don't remember if they appeared in the Exo I don't, Swords the name or, doesn't sound familiar from Exo Swords. So. Um, but my goodness, Loved the character. I'm really excited to see what they do with this, mm. as well as what else might come out of the whole Araco thing existing in the first place. But I would say worth picking up. It was a fun issue. It had good humor. Has an actual plot line that we're right. going into. I, I'm enjoying it. I would say pick it up if you were enjoying it, if you've had any interest. I believe this is the start of a new arc. I'm going to quickly check for you guys. Um with issue five? I feel like that would be the end. Well, because the previous ones, I believe, were related to King and Black. Oh, okay. It was a King yeah, and okay. Black tie-in, and I think this is the start of a new arc. Um, and the guy's name is... Yeah, so Fabian Cortez distinguished himself during Null's assault and died, essentially. Uh, but this does have the big question of where does kill no human Right, right, yeah. To? Where's the line? Yeah, yeah. Exactly. So that's going to be is an, an interesting, interesting argument, concept because yeah. it's like, no, that makes sense because humans are just the sentient life of Earth. Right. And we do have our space program. So it'll be interesting to see where that goes. I I enjoyed it. I thought it was fun. I'm really excited for this new character. Mm. So, uh, All right, moving on. We've got Spider-Woman number 11, which, like I thought, was Captain Marvel, but it's not. Yes, it the cover. Classic costume, new villains, great jumping on point. Yeah. Which is true. It's a great jumping on point. It is. You don't um, really need to know anything about the previous arcs. That being said, I wasn't as impressed as I was kind of hoping. No, I mean, it was an okay kind of opening to the new arc. Mm-hmm. Um, she does get back into the classic suit with some mild alterations. Yep. Uh, which she's trying to kind of figure out. She gets back into more of a normal superhero. And she's constantly career. saying, like, this is so oh, much so better. I just got to stop a bank robbery. This is so great. Um, yeah, I mean, it was okay. Uh, but the last arc started off really good. And then for me, or the last, I guess, two arcs, I guess, mm. started off really good and then kind of eh, went downhill, in my opinion. Um, this is slightly redeeming it. Yeah, it was a good first issue for this new arc, I think. So uh, question and, real quick. And an actual good jumping Does up. the husband have superpowers? The boyfriend. The boyfriend. Possible husband, because he does want to... Spoiler alert. He wants to propose. 
Um, I don't Which, think honestly, so. it's not too much of a spoiler because you can really obviously tell. Yeah, I don't tell. think he does. But they have a spot where it's like, maybe? I don't even like know. Like, maybe he's got some sort of yeah, ability, but he's, he's not like, a superhero. Exactly. Yeah, so yeah, it's yeah. going to be interesting to see where this goes. Um, yeah. I mean, not too much else to say. Yeah. If you've been wanting to read Spider-Woman, great jumping on point. Yeah. The cover does not lie. So I do like her old costume, though. I like the, the new old costume. That they gave at the start of the, yeah, the new comic series. I thought that was really good. I feel like they should have kept that and just made some alterations to that. Yeah. So, but. Uh, moving on to our next one, we've got Way of X number one. Did you read this? I did. I actually thought it was really good. I really yeah. liked this. I so, like Nightcrawler. He's a great character in my opinion. Exactly. So yeah. this one, if you guys remember, long, long ago when everything started, long, Nightcrawler long ago. essentially mentioned that mutants should have an a faith. Right. And in this one, we're learning that the kids are too okay with dying. Well, and that's the thing. And, and that's what they go into in this is because Kurt, obviously Nightcrawler, for those who don't know, um, devout Catholic. Yes. And so now you, everybody lives on Krakoa. People die all the time. You know, you have the crucible where... The point is to die. The point is to die, and everybody's cheering. Uh, you know, he has some obvious issues with this. So this particular issue, and I don't know if that's going to be the series as a whole, is kind of him trying to deal with how this goes against his the faith he's had for like his entire life. Yeah. Um, even when he's like talking to the teenagers and is like, "You guys shouldn't be okay with this," and they're like, "Why?" Yeah. And he's like. I don't know, but you shouldn't be. Exactly. <laughs> so it's like one of those things where it goes against his faith, but even he in this new world isn't sure how you're supposed to cope with that. Yes. Uh, and yeah, I honestly, I thought this was a great, just a Nightcrawler story, honestly. Oh, yeah. Yeah, this was Plus, fantastic. we're finally getting a bit more with Charles. Yes. I liked that, that we're like, we're actually seeing Charles Xavier do things. Because yeah. I feel like the only times you see him is when At it's the on the council yeah. and he says something vague. Yeah, and smiles um, in that I bet he's evil oh, kind of way. Yeah, yeah, he's always doing that there. I bet he's evil smile. But uh, yeah, I'm really excited to see where this goes because we also learned that there's like a boogeyman amongst the, the... patchwork man. Yes, yeah, so which it's, is I mean, it's if, cool. if you're constantly dying and brought back, but somebody like you, they're gonna come up with some sort yeah. of boogeyman, and it's a very interesting. Idea. And I really like that they show you a little of who might be this mm. because otherwise you would immediately go sinister. Right. Yeah. Like, cause that that's my what guess. he does. Yeah. Um, like so I'm he created the patchwork man that, and we've got, uh, Dr. Nemesis. It's growing like mushrooms. Yes. Out of his head. I really liked so, it. Yeah, there it was, was a good issue. There was a good amount of humor while yeah. also keeping it serious and making you really relate to nightcrawler of how do you handle this? Yeah. Like, what, what, how do you make a faith? Because he is going through the dilemma of, like, I mean, if it's there's easy no to death, say, yeah, exactly. That's what like, are you supposed to have faith in at that point? Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. way of X number one. I would honestly say, if you like X Men, if you like Nightcrawler, mm. pick it up. I it I is went, worth. I went the into shot. it like ugh, another X book, and then by the end, I was like, this is a really good X book. Yeah. So, uh, so fantastic way of X number one. I would say pick it up. So. Uh, moving on, we have our last comic of the week, X-Force number 19. Not too much goes on. We're just continuing the stuff with Quentin Quire mm. and his kind of transformation into being not truly a good guy, but more in that direction to the point that even Jean Grey's like, you know, old you, I would not have taught this, but new you, yeah, yeah I'll give yeah, you a yeah. shot kind of thing. And then she's also like, but remember... I could easily take you out if I wanted to. <laughs> could literally kill you. Um, and make you forget who you were. Exactly. Yeah. So, it was fun. Nothing amazing. Yeah. So, like, there's really not too much else to say because it's not a jumping on point. And if you've read the last issue, you're going to want to read this mm -hmm. one. Or, sorry, if you read the last issue and you're interested, yeah. you're going to want to read this one. If you did not enjoy the last one... This was essentially just part two to that. It could have been just one long issue and you would have gone, ah, yes, that makes sense. So uh, anyway, that is. It could end. have been one long issue. And when you finished it, you went and went, 
ah, that was the ending. <laughs> anyway, thank you guys so much for listening and watching today. If you want to support us, you can head over to twitch.tv slash comic storian, where we do film this live every Thursday at roughly 2 p.m. Eastern. Or you can support us over on our Patreon at patreon.com slash comic storian. Two dollars gives you access to this podcast, other podcasts, uh, great early access content. Ten dollars, you can help decide what goes on the comic storian channel. If you want to find more of Andy, he's for I am the Andy on Instagram. I am twitch.tv slash silo91 on Twitch. Thank you guys so much, and we'll see you next time. Bye.